Pulsar Studio. Video games are the youngest artistic medium, and since their emergence, they have managed to create masterpieces that, despite not using new resources, mark an era and define genres. This is Checkpoint, and today, we are going to discover an example of how they do it. All artistic media have works that define currents and mark epochs. These works mark a style and trend that will serve as an inspiration and guide for future artists and will lead to the creation of a genre. In many cases, the impact of these works comes from a new and original resource, which becomes the main characteristic of the work and the genre, and in others, it is the reuse and harmonious and novel combination of resources that previously existed. In the short life of the video game industry, there are also works that mark epochs and define genres. There are genres in which their origin is related to a specific title and in which thinking about that genre inevitably leads to think about the game and franchise that gave birth to them. And as in other media, the origin of genres has been given both by the use of original resources and the creation of novel mechanics, as well as by the reinvention and originality in the use of resources that already existed, following a creative vision. Dark Souls exemplifies this event in the video game industry. The work created by Hidetaka Miyazaki and the From Software team became an event that would be recorded in the history of the industry and would serve as a case of study and inspiration for the creators of this medium, as well as to name a new genre that, since 2011, is known as Souls-like. The origin of the Souls phenomenon began in Miyazaki's head with Demon Souls, the exclusive Sony title released in 2009, which for different reasons didn't have the impact and success that its successor had, but which already had many of the foundation and elements that gave life to the masterpiece of 2011. All starts from the philosophy and perception of the world in the mind of Miyazaki, for whom the world is not a happy and bright place, it is rather a desolate and hostile one. Human behavior has both a good and a bad side alike demonstrated by people supporting each other, but also attacking and harming each other all the time. However, this worldview also highlights the appreciation of the positive, because beautiful things are better seen and appreciated more in a desolate environment, such as light surrounded by darkness or a flower in a desert. The inspiration in other media that fuels this worldview is a combination of artists and illustrators who reflect a similar idea. For the design and artistic style of characters, creatures, and weapons, much inspiration comes from the art of Frasera, an American painter, cartoonist, and illustrator who drew fantasy and science fiction as well as different Japanese manga, especially the one created by Kentaro Miura in 1989 called Berserk, which has an epic fantasy and dark fantasy style set in a medieval European time. Like the works of Miura and Frasera, the world that Miyazaki's vision represents is strongly inspired by the dark and fantastic medieval Europe that he is so passionate about. Works such as Excalibur and King Arthur, Conan the Barbarian, Beowulf and the Nibelungs help to give form and life to that hostile dark world with tints of ephemeral and scarce beauty, which represent, as he says, a way of breeding the undecorated stench of humanity. The architecture follows the same line of inspiration, using Gothic, Renaissance and medieval styles that can be seen in many cities and buildings in Europe. For example, the iconic city of Anor Orlando is inspired by the Cathedral of Milan. The sunken city of New Londo is inspired by Mont St. Michel in Normandy and other areas such as Undeadborg, Saint Fortress and constructions such as churches and catacombs do not have a unique inspiration, but they follow those same styles present in European architecture. Within that vision, there were three clear concepts to represent in the world of Dark Souls. Medieval mythology in which gods and knights exist, chaos in the form of fire and hell, and death and decadence. With this vision, Miyazaki always had in mind to make a gameplay experience that would return to the foundations of the industry, to mechanics and design that would challenge the player and appeal to their perseverance to progress. Another concept would not be compatible with a dark and desolated world like the one in his mind. 
In the early days of the industry, there were no concepts such as difficulty options or save files. The games that represent this type of experience are exploration and dungeon games, and the roguelike experiences where failure means starting over from the beginning without opportunity of a safe progress. The level and map design had to follow the guidelines of going back to the roots and representing that dark and twisted world. The roots lead towards an experience of corridors, dungeons and linear tours full of enemies to defeat. But to represent the full nature of such a detailed world, it is necessary to add a touch of freedom and open world illusion where every aspect of that vision fits, and those details do not feel isolated. This is how areas such as dungeons or independent linear areas were devised, but which were part of a world connected from a central area. The impact of this design on the player is very strong, because although each section is like an independent level to overcome, by going through it and overcoming it, a connection with the other areas is obtained as a reward, that gives access to shortcuts and greater mobility to continue the progress, representing that light amid so much darkness and the rewarding perseverance. In this linear and connected design at the same time, different levels are also used, going up and down stairs or elevators and progressing transversely and vertically at the same time, which gives a greater depth to the illusion of an open world and represents metaphorically the duality of descending into darkness, abyss and hell and ascending to the light of the glory of the world where the gods and knights live. To maintain the essence of the roots of video games using challenging elements but without hindering the expression of that detailed world that the vision represents, the checkpoints in form of bonfires play a fundamental role. The difficulty inherent in a hostile and hopeless world is generated by designing complicated levels that serve as a challenge to the player. However, a completely rough experience in which each death returns to the start of the game would go too far and leave the appreciation and experience of the world in second plane. That is why each area that serves as a level has one or more checkpoints to restart in case of failure and death. In this the player can recharge the resources to try again the area. In addition, these bonfires also represent a form of light in the darkness, a point where all the souls that pass through that purgatory gather together and share a few moments of calm before continuing with the fight. In the same way that Miyazaki sees the world as a hostile place, the world of Dark Souls is hostile to the player, seeking to eradicate and expel him like the immune system does with an infectious agent. The world and the levels are full of elements to represent a risk towards the player. Through any resource such as traps, hidden enemies, brittle floors or difficult to navigate surfaces, unsupported pathways or even poison and fire, ensuring that the player never gets comfortable, changing the tweaks and introducing new surprises throughout the entire experience. For Miyazaki, it is also important to use role-playing elements in the gameplay, because within that vision of darkness, each player must have their own perception and experience of the world and this can only be achieved through a variety of resources and tools. In order to provide enough tools, it is essential to have a wide and varied gameplay, from which the different classes and fighting styles that each player can choose are born. To achieve this variety, there are not only the typical classes of role-playing games, but each weapon and usable item brings a unique characteristic and style. There are not only slow and heavy armors with great defense and resistance, or light armors with less resistance but there are different types of defense and different types of attack, as well as different effects granted by each object. There is also no simple difference between strong and slow weapons with fast and weak weapons or long and short distance weapons, but each weapon has an animation that has as a consequence a different effect and style in combat and all have their strengths and weaknesses. All these designs always follow Miyazaki's source of inspiration, which express the vision. The game drives the player's action by using the role-playing element, where to face that dark and hostile world, it is necessary to improve the parameters and equipment, and to achieve this, it is necessary to eliminate enemies and get souls that serves as a currency to level up and buy things. The use of the same object for both purposes turns this resource into an engine to progress constantly, and at the same time, it becomes an element of challenge and penalty, being the object that it is lost each time the player fails and dies. 
Within this vision, the difficulty is an important characteristic to create the experience. However, this is often misunderstood. The hostile world is intimidating to anyone who sees it, and for this reason, every element and detail communicates that the experience is not a walk in the park. The mechanics of constantly dying and being resurrected add to this narrative and belief, but this is not to say that this is an impossible or frustrating experience all the time. If so, it would not be enjoyed by more than a handful of people and would not have become the phenomenon that it is. The team at From Software set out to create a challenging but not impossible experience by designing the combat in a way that represented the idea of trying multiple times without generating total frustration, always being able to reach a point of achievement and satisfaction. The enemies were designed with behavior patterns that allow them to be observed and learned by the player so that he or she can face them with a strategy and decision making based on that knowledge. A combat style was also designed in which the attack, both from the enemy and the player, is powerful and the defense weak. These two elements together mean that the player can face each challenge and die a few times, learning what is necessary to devise a better strategy and thus be able to overcome the challenge without the need to develop a skill based on speed and reflexes. Every boss is presented as a colossal and impossible monster at first, but after trying to defeat it and die a couple of times, the behavior pattern can be learned and that impression of impossibility disappears to give away to a sense of possibility and accomplishment. In addition, the difficulty is adjustable by the player through the elements of role and variety, allowing to increase the parameters and improve the equipment in an almost unlimited way. And although the game gives an apparent freedom to travel the world at will, the design of the levels has a clear progressive structure where the enemies to face or the accessible tools in each situation give indications to the player of which areas correspond to each moment. The objects and treasures are distributed on the map in a way that invites exploration and serves as a guide to call the players to the places they must go first, although this also serves as a trap on some occasions. And like the distribution of objects and treasures, there are many elements in the design that contribute to the appearance of impossibility and later give away to a light of hope. Many areas are presented with impossible enemies that force you to take other paths where you can find a more optimal solution for this challenge. The brilliance of this is that the game never explicitly explains these details to the player, but hides them for players to discover them on their own, which not only has a great impact on the experience, but also contributes to that vision of challenge and going back to the roots where taking the player by the hand is not an option and each player must go through the experience on their own. The same happens with story and narrative. With a vision so clear and so well represented in the world, the level design, gameplay, combat and progression, the narrative and story arise in a natural way in which every aspect and detail, both interactive and passive, tells the story. This vision requires the story to be born from its elements and be adapted to them, and there is no better way to implement this than being faithful to the style and functioning of the other elements of the work, leaving it to be the world itself and the actions that narrate it, and that each player discovers and experiences it on their own and in their own way, without needing someone or something to explicitly narrate it. Thus, a story arises of a place in decay where the humanity that inhabits lives in a curse that turned them into undeath, condemned to an endless cycle of constant death and resurrection, in a reduced and ephemeral existence. And this is how From Software and Miyazaki created a masterpiece that marked an era in the industry and gave life to a new genre. A genre that does not use any new resource or element, but implements them aligned to a very clear and detailed vision in such a harmonious way that they create a world with life of its own and that is an experience impossible to replicate. The new genre is known as Souls-like because, no matter how different developers try to use the elements of this work to create their own, they will not be able to do something different until they have a vision as clear, detailed and unique as Miyazaki's one that forces them to use the elements in their own way and not in the soul's way. When this happens, another new genre will be born that will be called with the name of that work. And you? Have you lived the experience of the soul's genre first hand? 
What do you think are the resources or elements that make this work so special? Leave it in the comments below. I hope you have enjoyed this episode of Checkpoint. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this to keep discovering the art in making and designing video games. See you next time.